so you you were quite young when when the apartheid system was was dismantled. Tell us a little bit about about your experiences of it when 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 you were younger and your memories of of the end of apartheid, and perhaps a little how this uh, how this affected your parents. Um, being born in in Johannesburg and at that time when apartheid was sort of in the end. Uh, we had we have moved from Bumalang in the Standardton, so that was one of the reasons why we had to move to Johannesburg, because in Bumalang they had a lot of stairways, they would burn schools, so security-wise kids would not be safe, so one would be pushed to actually sit home, sit at home for for like nearly the whole term, if not two. So then my mother, because my mother and my dad worked in Rosebank, in Johannesburg, sorry, they started in downtown because they both worked for Gallo Records. So then they thought it's, good, it's a good idea to, for me and my, other, my brothers and sisters to come up and study in Johannesburg, which is where I, I had my sort of first school where I had to learn how to speak English because all the township schools were not, we were not allowed to go to school at all. So one was forced to go to a white school, which was a huge barrier because this is something that one was not used to. Now having to explain yourself, having to know where exactly are you in terms of studies, and it was a little bit slow, but I guess my parents got me into a point where one must understand that color is actually just a color. It, we, we, it, it didn't affect us a lot. Because my mom was an artist, she was a jazz singer. Um, so she had a lot of white friends. My dad also had a lot of white friends. They had to travel up and down with artists. We had white friends coming up to my house. We had to go and, 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 and visit and all that. So really it was something that you hear of on TV and radio. Except for that, not really much. <laughs> no, it was not possible. My school had, the first languages was English and Afrikaans. Yes, and the problem then was that you always had to sneak to, to, to go to school, by the way, from the township, because everybody knew that the kids are not going to school. If they were to find out that you are going to school, they would actually make sure that they burn the transport that you, you, you travel with, or they will do something just that they make it impossible for you to get to school because the rest of the kids in the township were not going to school at that moment. So it was a little bit tricky. I remember at some point we had to walk sort of 20 minutes in the bushes to the next other small suburb so that that's where the transport would pick me up which was like in the morning at five o'clock. It's a little bit dark. It, it was a chance taking, but we finally got through it. I've always been in a singing environment, but when you get to theater, that's where you get to meet other races, you know? And I found not with me, but with other people that it's, it's not what they went through, but it's what they've been told. It's when they were growing up, it's what they've been told. So you do, you would find that, okay, this is your space, this is my space. But the minute you get in sort of in a, in a, in a production like this, you forget, you get, you get lost into, into theater life. I'd like to think that outside life and theater, it's actually different. Because when we come to theater, we create our own world where you totally forget your color, you totally forget one's language. I remember my first time when I was in theater with Matilda, that was my first chorus master, you know. So she, she would actually want us to exchange languages. She would ask me, so what is this in English? What is this in, in Zulu or Kosa? You know, sometimes she would address me in, in, in Zulu and it would actually be so much fun because sometimes if an opera is like based in South Africa, then you were forced to sort of have words that you say out in Isizulu, Kosa, Sotho, and Zwana. So you, we actually got to a point where it really did not matter. Well, during breaks and during other times, well, that's where you'd see that there is 
a lot that we still need to do based on that I think youth, people my age, I don't think we understand a lot about apartheid. I think the only thing that we know is color and language. We don't really know the reasons why it happened. Um, I just think there just needs to be much more, much more education into it. I think they do in a way that I think they were only just told. I don't think there's, there has been a strong hand for them, like a strong voice for them to really, really believe it. When we have uh, days like important days like Youth Day, Heritage Day, Africa Day, that's where you realize how much, how less we know. You know, that's, that's where you realize that actually there's so much more that we need to go out and do research and, and go to museums and, and get people that will be interested to tell us all these uncomfortable, you know, situations that they've went through. Because you find that our elders, the people that are in, 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 this, in this position, are the ones actually that would find it a little bit uncomfortable to talk about these days clearly because of the experiences that they've went through. Sometimes it could be because maybe they don't want us to sort of adapt the same mindset. But it's, it's, it's still a little bit uncomfortable to get a person that when you ask a question that is really, really uncomfortable, they will actually be up and tell you, okay, look, this is what, is what, it, this, this what was, was happening and this, this is what was happening. Because <laughs> when you start coming to black and white, it goes like, uh, okay, I think this is the time we need to stop, you know. So it's, it, it is a little bit an uncomfortable issue at the moment. Yes, there's still a lot that we need to do as youth because I think now we sort of came into a point where our parents have done so much and they fought so much to get into this freedom. But we sort of are taking things on an open hand. We're taking things for granted. We're just walking on ice. You know, we don't understand that actually our parents had to go on their knees and dig with their hands. We're just sort of taking things for granted and it's, it's actually a worrying issue.